You're on tune to Nice Up TV. Bless up yourself. Out here, our reggae online. Yeah, Tennessee. This is Johnny has been a dance father from Jamaica. I've been here from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2013. Still kicking it strong. Same. And, you know, music is my life. I don't know, so this original root track reggae. That's my stuff. Yeah, so, after migrating to Canada in 1969, I returned to Jamaica in 1979 because like, I was uh, having my solo career on the forefront for a while because I was singing with a band and just being a member of another group called Aishan People. So I wanted to be back in the forefront of the reggae scene so I went back to Jamaica in 1980 and I recorded the first song for Studio One called Watermore and Flower. Then I decided to record an album called Truth and Rights. Then John Jolaz was trying to find me and he finally ran into someone who knew where to find me. So he sent someone to call me and I meet up with John Jolaz and then the first song I recorded for John Jolaz was the Ice Cream Love and we made that album called Ice Cream Love. And then the King Jammies, at the same time, same 1980, King Jammies was a friend of mine because we used to be in Canada together for a while. Jammies went back home to Jamaica, so when I came back to Jamaica, I, you know, Jammies started producing, so I also recorded an album for Jammies. So right in that time, I was trying to get my voice out there to, you know, to get as much of me as I can, so that's what I, I did. So 19, 79 to 1980 was a very important period in my career because that was like Johnny Asburn's second coming because I made my first album 69, migrated to Canada that same month that I made the album and stayed in Canada for 10 years and come back to Jamaica after 10 years and start over. So with that, the studio one album called Truth and Right with Johnny Asburn's second coming. Can you tell me the importance of your your lyrics and your message in a time in, in the world when reggae music was turning more to slackness and gun talk, let's say? Yeah, well, like, like slackness was my vision because I love music and writing. I love to write, I love to compose, I love to originate. So, like, I didn't want to, I didn't want my claim to fame to be something that could not live for the next 50 years. I wanted to put on something that could tell a story on the road of time that even when I'm gone, my children and my children's children can say that was my dad's song. You know, like if, like if my, you know, my kids grow up, I, I don't want them to be ashamed of saying this is what my father was doing. I said, that's what your father was doing? Oh, it sounds, you know, it, 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 it sounds funny. I mean, like, you know, like your father, you know, didn't make a good song. I want them to say, yeah, your father made good music. So I was trying to make sure I leave this legacy for my generation and my next generation and my next generation. To say, yes, this was my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather. He was making this. What did people in New Zealand tell New Zealand that I haven't been to New Zealand yet, but these are places that I'd like to know and I'd like to go. So I'm hoping to see you people in New Zealand soon. And we are said us, you know, we are keep this, this road track reggae train moving because we're not trying to kill our music. We're trying to make sure we preserve it and make sure we can share it with indigenous people from any corner and every corner of the earth. So, New Zealand, Australia, everywhere in the world, I want the music to reach there. I'm going to keep on doing it till I can't do it no more. So one love New Zealand.